What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So here we are, galloping slowly toward the start of another NBA season. And here we have the start of another bullshit narrative in this ongoing LeBron versus Jordan farcical, fake-ass goat debate. So the talking point this season from the Ledicklicks is that when LeBron passes Kareem in scoring this year, that indeed, that indubitably makes him the GOAT. No doubt about it. Over Jordan. Isaiah Thomas, the number one Jordan hater of all times, co-signed that. Well, my thing is this. So, if LeBron passing Kareem and scoring, along with his four rings, makes him the GOAT, then why don't they see Kareem's position as the all-time leading scorer and his six rings as the GOAT, since scoring is so important? I mean, Kareem does have two more rings. Kareem does have two more finals MVPs over LeBron. You know, Kareem's accomplishments actually exceed LeBron's, but why don't they see him as the GOAT? But anyway, we've been seeing a lot of this bullshit lately from there. Supposedly, they said that Hey, when he beat the Warriors in 2016, that made him the GOAT. You know, funny because, look, a lot of people call me and others Jordan nut huggers and, and all that type of shit, right? Jordan jock strap sniffers, whatever. But at least, I know I do at least, I acknowledge the roles and the accomplishments of the other players on the team, whether it's Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, Dennis Rodman, um, Steve Kerr, John Paxson, Tony Kukoc, especially in the second three beat, Ron Harper defensively, Randy Brown with energy coming off the bench. So at the end of the day, Jason Caffey. I, I remember all those guys, Dickie Simpkins, Bill Winnington. I embraced the whole fucking team. Jordan, there are some Jordan Jock Strash was only talk about Mike. I'm not going to act like they don't exist. But I embrace the whole team. But LeBron Dick Licks, they look at one fucking player. They can't even tell you some of his past teammates. That's why they call them bums. Because they don't value anybody other than him. Oh, well, he played with a bunch of bums. Well, how would you know? Did you watch them? You're 18. We won't, what the fuck do you remember from 2007? Kyrie Irving hits the game winner, but, you know, that made LeBron the GOAT. Then that wasn't enough. Then you start seeing this. Well, in my opinion, LeBron's ring against the Warriors is one and a half. It's one and a half. I could even argue... Two, but I'm going to just go with one and a half. So that actually gives LeBron four and a half rings. Then he went in the bubble. He went in the bubble and he played in conditions that no other team had to. Stifling, inhumane conditions. So that ring is worth one and a half. So LeBron really has five rings. Then you take into account the championships that he had in Miami. They went against a team with three future MVPs. That's two rings to me. So theoretically, he has more rings than Michael. Man, shut the fuck up. That's what we're doing now? Is that what we're doing so... What about game seven, game six, excuse me, 1998? Pippen back was so bad, he couldn't do shit out there. He just a decoy. 
And Jordan had to take that team on his back by his goddamn self and beat the Utah Jazz. This Jazz team that everybody loves to throw up, say he won't shit. Oh, this Jazz team ain't shit. Now imagine, as much as they play pick and roll in the NBA today, a team that was a master of the pick and roll is going to struggle and, and play like shit. Uh, John, John, uh, Jeff Hornacek, one of the great shooters of his era, right? He, he Six foot three. He gonna struggle today. Well, all you gotta do is shoot not to play defense. John Stockton, 50% shooter for his career, 38% three-point shooter, 82% from the line. He gonna struggle today. <laughs> you know, this is the same team. Same team that beat the Kobe and Shaq Lakers, swept their ass, kept beating their motherfucking ass. But, hey, Jordan played some cupcakes. Jordan didn't play great teams. Well, what's the best team in jazz history? The team Jordan played in the finals. What's the best Sonic team? Well, you could argue the, the, 70, the 79 Sonics, but record-wise, the 96 Sonics. What's the best Phoenix Sun team? <clears throat> well, I have to go with the Suns team that Mike played in 93. So it ain't like this guy won't play nobody in the finals. Man, that's bullshit, man. Look, I saw something that Shannon Sharp said. I'm going to end the video on this. He was talking about, you know, Michael wasn't, he was insinuating that Mike wasn't the all-around player that LeBron was. And I've always said, that before Phil Jackson became the head coach, Michael was playing a role similar to LeBron James in, in 89. He was playing a role similar to it. That's, that's why as a 6'5", 195-pound point guard, he averaged 32 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists in a league that was much taller than it is today. And if Michael was just a shooter, if he was just a scorer, then why is he the Chicago Bulls all-time leader in points, rebounds, assists, and steals? Just trying to figure that one out. Shouldn't it be Scottie Pippen and rebounds and assists? But no, it's Jordan and points, rebounds, assists, and steals. Well, he played a long time. No, he didn't play that long. Not that long. 13 full seasons. I would even argue, why did it take LeBron so long to get to 10,000 rebounds? Why did it take him that long? It took him, what, 1,300-plus games? Where, whereas it took Bird about 850 games, 860 games or something like that? Well, anyway, that's all I got to say about it. <clears throat>